My name is Marta Lampard, I'm from Poland and I'm staying in Utrecht now as a Shelter City guest. The Shelter City program uh, is the three month stay. I'm hosted by Peace Brigades International and the Municipality of Utrecht. And it's an individually formed program, which means uh, I can relax, I can study if I want, I can network uh, the amount that I want. Anything of my choosing that helps me to get better and to work better when I come back. I am an activist. Uh, I'm a founder and one of the leaders of the Polish Women's Strike. Yeah, this is the Polish Women's Strike logo. It means yeah, women's strike. Uh, we are the ones who organize demonstrations for women's rights, LGBT rights, judicial independence, rule of law in Poland in the last five years. We are now in 600 cities in Poland and we are the major opposition force in Poland against the right-wing government, against the church, against the neo-fascism that is on the rise in Poland. When the Russian war started in Ukraine, we are also one of the organizations, many organizations in Poland, that took upon the response to the war. So we are one of the thousands and thousands of volunteers that do the response, the war response, collecting uh, goods, sending them to Ukraine, organizing humanitarian aid points. So that's the addition now because of the war. In spite of the fact that people already have progressive views, regular progressive views on human rights, on, on uh, everything that we need to just live freely, um, our laws are absolutely uh, opposite to that. We have a practical ban on abortion since 2020. We have this horrible smear hate campaign uh, against LGBT persons, including the so-called LGBT free zones established by city councils and some local uh, authorities. We don't have contraception, accessible contraception. We don't have emergency contraception. We don't have any protection from violence. Uh, Polish government basically stripped the funding uh, for the domestic violence survivors organizations. The crucial thing is that none of that would happen, or at least most of that wouldn't happen, if we had the rule of law and if we had judicial independence. Judicial independence, the, the, the part that we still have, is something that keeps us going. I'm on 102 trials for protesting. And the state and the state police and the state persecutors lose one case after the other uh, against the protesters. But we don't have judicial independence on the uh, constitutional court level that was politically hijacked. That's why we have the ban on abortion. And that's how the government already declared that they are not uh, going to follow with uh, the EU treaties on judicial independence issues. And this is the core fight in Poland. Poland is seeing its biggest protests in decades with widespread fury at a decision to almost totally ban abortions. I was with the Committee for the Defense of Democracy then and the ban on abortion was put on the table in the Polish parliament. This horrible total ban on abortion, really barbaric thing. We discussed that if we want to stop that, we have to do something else than before, like demonstrating in big cities on, on weekends, without disruption and so on. And I went, I was invited to speak at, the, at one of those demonstrations, and I called for the national strike to be held a week after that, on the 3rd of October, and that was Black Monday. We called it Black Monday, and we called it um, a Polish Women's Strike. And that's how it started. And 150 city protested on that day, on the 3rd of October. And it changed the way that people were organizing protests, attending protests, and protesting itself uh, for good. This is really hard uh, because there are things that we think of that they come with the job, they shouldn't come with any job. Uh, I'm getting death threats, I'm getting rape threats, I'm getting the whole cyberbullying hatred campaign against me 
And this is, of course, people doing that, but the source of that is the state. It's the state campaign, it's the state campaign on the public television. Each time uh, they publish something on the national public television about me, uh, because I'm the evil face of the Polish opposition, one of uh, a few, there's always the rise in the number of messages, scary messages that we get. I think the most serious one was um, during the pro-European demonstration organized by Donald Tusk. I was invited to speak there and there was this person uh, who just watched too much of the public television and was just fueled by the campaign, uh, the hate campaign against me that announced that they are going to actually kill me during this demonstration, during my speech. Uh, and I had uh, police protection for that, even because the police decided that the profile of the person is serious, that the threat is serious and I need protection. I wasn't that scared, but the people around me were, so, and I trust them a lot, so I just did what I was told. I had this young person approaching me during the protest, he was like, I think he was 20 years younger or something like that, and he said, you're so funny, when you will uh, leave the jail, you can be a stand-up comedian. So that was a compliment and a scary thing at the same time. Like, they know that I will end up in jail. And when I get out, I don't know what I will be doing. It might be a totally different situation. I won't go into politics. And I think I will be doing what I'm doing now until things are done properly. I am asked, how can I believe that everything will be fine? It's not that I believe, I know. It's the job to be done. And that's why I'm doing this.